water the same as the ocean. Amen. Same thing. So this is the same concept. You get the word pagan. The word pagan only means the people. In this case, it just meant African people. And it said pagan. If you look up the word pagan, it means a person without a religion. You're right, because we didn't have religions in the ancient times. A religion is something new. A religion is something new. We had a way of life and an educational system. An educational mystery system. Uh, uh, so we didn't have, so when they say pagan, pagan, they just mean a person that was an advanced or uh, primal person. And we have to go back and we have to turn around these particular, this particular uh, information to see if you're still on. Because uh, I hit something, let's see. See if you're still on. You still on? Yeah. Okay, good. So now, for the people who have problems with a lot of things, feel, uh, feel, and if this time you can raise your hand in the middle of the day. It doesn't matter. We'll address questions as we go along. But feel free to answer. Because we're not dealing in a day where we don't have the actual scholarship and the actual knowledge to bear witness to all answers, uh, to bear witness to all, uh, all questions. So at this particular time, uh, what we want to do is, uh, first of all, I want to want to say this particular stuff. We're talking about energy. In Star Wars, they call it the Force. Now remember, the Star Wars trilogy was taken from the Joseph Campbell's book. From Princeton University, A Hero of a Thousand Faces. So you want to get that book, A Hero of a Thousand Faces. George Lucas wrote that particular Star Wars trilogy from that particular book, as well as Frank Herbert Doom, who studied Sufism, a mystical Islam, for seven years. And uh, for seven years, Steven Spielberg and the whole nine yards, those particular crew, study ancient mysticism and ancient mystical, mystical religions or ancient African religions and that's how you get uh, your whole Star Wars trilogy which we'll go into also which we'll go into also tonight also so uh, um, so let's see here I think we're gonna um, I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna deal with this tonight I'm gonna deal with this tonight so first of all um, what I want you to do is, it's better when you listen to music, to listen to people who have made transition. So what does that mean? You have the earthly realm, you have the earthly realm, and then you have the heavenly realm. It is not necessarily up or down, but it's dimensional. That means we're talking about the same earth, different dimension. When you see the, when you see the, the, the show slide. Now, so instead of this line being up, this line should be side by side, parallel. So one would be the earthly realm, and one would be the actual heavenly realm. Now, this is what we're going to deal with. You, you ever went to get a job, and you didn't get the job because you didn't have somebody on the inside, but somebody might have somebody on the inside so they get the hook up. You know the brothers do the whole hook up thing. Well, when you're dealing with energy, because we are all energy, people who make the transition, which means people that you so-called die and we don't understand death, we just think it's just about the, 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 the decay of the physical body. When a person makes the transition, that is a person on the inside of the job or on the inside of the corporation. In this case, we're talking about the other dimension of the heavenly corporation blocking for you. You understand what I'm coming from? A person has got your back. So therefore, it is good to conjure up mystical images of your lifetime or of this particular 20th century when it comes to music. So therefore, playing a Bob Marley album would mean a certain amount of energy and those particular energy frequencies can come and visit you and enhance your surroundings. Jimi Hendrix, Miles Davis. In this case, what I want you to do for an energy frequency that will be very conducive to you is you need to go and get the 1937, 19, no, 1938, 1939 double compact disc of Duke Ellington which 
was probably, the, which is not, which is the greatest composer of the 20th century. The greatest composer of the 20th century is Duke Ellington, bar none. What is spiritual about that on a Christ proportion, Christos, the anointed one, which you are all the Christos, is that he learned how to do, write music, play the piano, write for everybody in the band, write for symphony orchestras, and record hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of, of different compositions. He learned how to do that in about a week. His mother said he sat at the piano, and at the end of the day he could play music and write music. And at the end of the week, basically, he was a genius. So we're talking about somebody that's sent to do a certain particular job. And if you play, if you go and get the 1938-1939, it's, it's a compact disc set of Duke Ellington, 38-39, which is some of the peak of when he was really, I mean, he, he lasted for years, but at the peak, the 1938-1939 years, you can get it now on CBS Records for I think about $20, $21. And it, and, and it might have something like 50 different songs on a double CD. You want to get this and you want to play this particular thing to enhance a certain amount of energy and also a certain amount of energy dealing with Harlem. Because you know this was the stomping ground. So we'll get into that when you ask questions on what we're dealing with when it is talking about when, when it is talking about using the ones who have made the transition to get to a certain level. Now, right now, you know, as we start off, we always start off with what is called hard copy. And hard copy is, uh, hard copy is what's actually going on in the news and what's around us today. So we're going to start off with that before we get into the advanced occultism. And when we say occultism, we're not talking about cults. The word cult is, you know, that's some master of somebody over you telling you what to do. And we're talking about occultism, which means that which is hidden, or what you call the esoteric tradition. Now, to make ourselves clear on what we're talking about, we are supposed to be educated people now, so you must think on a much more advanced level. When we say that, we mean this for the people who are the first time hearing me. For every organized religion, there is a mystical side in which the priest used to learn, which didn't have shit to do with what the everyday people got. The everyday people got moralism, which really has nothing to do with spirituality at all. That's just going to place blind, going through, going through a room blind, hoping you don't bump into nothing. And with, with good behavior, you might be able to get out of this thing. But there's another universal sign. So, in Judaism, the exoteric, exoteric which means which everybody learns, and the esoteric is which the priests learn. So in Judaism, the exoteric is the Torah, the five books of Moses, and what you call Judaism, which is coming out of Africa, you know. The esoteric is Kabbalistic, the Kabbalah, which is the esoteric Hebrewism. In Christianity, you have the Bible and the Christian thing, and then, and then 12,000 different denominations. But the esoteric Christianity, which has been killed off, was not the system. In Islam, you have, the, you have the, 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 the Quran and you have Islam, but you have an esoteric Islam, which is Sufism, which is an actuality in its real faith, is more science. That's the real shit. Because Sufi means woolly-haired one. Sufi, woolly-haired one. So woolly-haired one was me. It was the more. So anytime you hear the cracker saying Sufism, that was just an adjective to explain. You see, the person is the more. It's a good book on the Lord, science, and on the Sufism, people of the secret. People of the secret. Ernest Scott. A must read a master of the English language. But he says, soup is in Spain. You know he's talking about the Moors. But soup means woolly haired one. So the esoteric teachings of Islam is Sufism, which is actually advanced Moorish science. Ancient Egypt, that's 
all esoteric because those are what you call ancient cultures. But your three major ones, so Buddhism, the esoteric Buddhism, would be your yogi system. The exoteric would be Buddhism. You must understand there's a difference between the esoteric and the exoteric. So if shit starts sounding strange, you must understand that you are dealing with the esoteric. You understand where I'm coming from? First of all, when I use curse words, you must understand that there is no such thing as a curse word or, 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 or blasphemy or whatever because when the English language was put down, the ancient stuff was already here. So that means when the ancient material or what you call the ancient concept of God gave so-called laws, the English language hadn't been invented, so how in the hell could the English language be a curse word or something that God even give a damn about? You understand? So we want to get that straight for the people who hung up on, you know, a little bit of semantics that really don't really mean anything at this particular time. So now, dealing with that, we're going to go into the hard copy, which is in fact, the hard copy is in fact what's going on right now, today, and then as we work our way on up, we go to the esoteric teachings. But first on the news, let's understand something. In uh, January or February, the Coca-Cola company put out a soda called Surge. Had they, and I think it was the spirit that made them put it out in January. Because if they would have put the Surge out in the summer, they might have did a, did a lot of damage to black people, especially children. This Surge, I drank some of this Surge, which I ain't had no business doing, but you know how a nigga is. I drank some of this Surge, and my shit was green for three days. And piss. Green. Now, as you know, and I don't want to gross you out, but as you know, you don't get nothing green now that you eat something like a blue popsicle or some kind of stuff like this. You know, and stuff, you know. But for a coke, for a soda to have your stuff green for three days, you know that's some powerful stuff. Also, one of my friends who is not conscious at all just came up and said he was, the spirit just told him. That's something they put out to kill the black man and black woman. And he just said, you know how you got some people, grandma was sitting on the porch. We don't know where this shit comes from, but when it comes, you know it's right. We've gotten away from that. We've lost that innocence. So there's certain people that's not into knowledge. And when they say something, they don't know where it came from. It just comes. Because the Spirit tells them that. Right? And this brother that has no consciousness whatsoever just said, I believe that's something that was, the Spirit told me that that's something that put out to kill black, the black man and black woman. But he also said he was drinking a bottle of his, uh, a bottle of his surge. And he bit into something, some food, and it had a chemical reaction in his mouth and burnt the side of his mouth, his jaw. So now if this can do this to a 37 year old grown man, what you think this can do to a person, three, two, you know, especially, you know, black people, you see, giving the children that kind of stuff. So it's very key because it was interesting because it was, uh, it was interesting because I said this last week in a lecture and a brother said that he was talking to some white boys and they were sitting around the table and the white boys told him that Coca-Cola was trying to put out something that was going to mess up some people. So, uh, probably drinking it by itself probably won't do nothing. But then again, you don't know what the, the, the long-term effects that things have when you come down with something. Something can stay in your system that long. You know what I'm saying? So very key that you understand that at this particular time. I want to deal with a couple of things in the, uh, I want to deal with a couple of things in the, uh, on the top of the agenda. First of all, Puff Daddy, which is, you know, probably one of the less talents in the world. Here's the man to take a whole album of somebody's shit. <laughs> he just go in and take a whole album and play a whole song and get people put, putting their face in the middle of the camera and he making money off this thing. He ain't even trying to mix it up on a clever style. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, he getting ready to do a memorial piece for Princess Diana. Ain't this a bitch? Uh, 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 Tupac t-shirt 
selling Biggie Small t-shirts and Princess Diana t-shirts. Now, first of all, we must understand what in the devil does Princess Diana have to do with us? First of all, you got to understand the signs on what's really going on. And that is this. The whole Princess Diana thing down was a conspiracy, you know. They told her not to marry that sand nigga. Right. She was going to marry the sand nigga. Yeah. Which was an arrow. Came up with a black man. And was going to have to convert to Islam. Because that was a high up prince. Whatever that thing. So she had to convert to Islam. Uh, Reverend Valentine can tell you the real scoop on this thing because he got it down to a science as far as the underground message of what this raw fight was about. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to look at the spiritual implications on how does this affect us. First of all, we understand that world imperialism is not solely America, but we understand that the grandfather of world imperialism is England. You understand what I'm saying? It's England. We're talking about the biggest slave traders known to man. Dr. Ben told you, Dr. John Henry Clark told you that they were kept out of the slave trade for a hundred years and when they got into it, they took it over and made sure nobody else got into it. So the spiritual part is, we're talking about world imperialism or world domination breaking down. This is the spiritual part about it. We're talking about the whole lot of Muhammad said, you'll know the end or you'll know the time is over when, when the masters or the people that's ruling start accusing each other and start fighting, infighting the money among each other. So you got American royalty, which is this new southern version of Camelot, which you had the Irish version, which is the Kennedy thing, and that broke down. But this new southern version of Camelot is the so-called Clinton. But every week they got some stuff on all of that. So you talk about a family fight going on around the world. You see, so if it got to the point that they had to take her out, that means that there's a break in the system because you don't hear too much from, the, from England, the grandfather. You see what I'm saying? Which is the chief beast. Which if you know anything in history, the world is not set. The sun don't set on the British Empire, which meant that, that everywhere you went around the world, Britain had a ownership in some piece of the land of the people. So we're talking about an imperialistic monster. And when you get to your point on the royal level that you have to start taking people out, you know that that particular system is breaking down. And we should actually rejoice. Because that's spiritual. You've got to understand the signs of actually going down at this particular time. That's very spiritual that you understand that. Now, we understand some other things that they're playing tricks on us. They announced two days before October 26th about there might be another stock market crash. And then a week later, somewhere around the Million Woman March, and right after that, they started having this stock market crash. The key is, this is nothing spiritual. This is a test run that they had their hands in, and somewhere down the line, somewhere down the line, when they had that computer glitch, and all your records get wiped out, and all the money goes back to the United States government because on this money, as you know, if your face ain't on, ain't on this, you don't own it. So this was a test run to when this money goes back to the United States government on what they call this promissory note of this loan. So therefore, anytime they predict something one week and the next week it happens, you know that they're trying to test this whole thing on how they can get away with doing it. Now they also talk about this computer glitch that's supposed to happen somewhere in 1999, the year 2000. God, I hope we don't even get to that because I don't even live on that day-to-day -day basis. On, on that year-to-year uh, -year basis, I live day-to-day. -day. That's how you know what's going on. We'll, we'll explain that in a few minutes. But the key is, um, they've already announced that they got this thing in 1999, the computers are going to all just delete the things, delete the, the information because it was only built for the year 2000, but yet they got about three or four white boys, and I know two or three black people that can fix this thing, but they're still going ahead with this because that's a part of the plan to basically all ownership of material wealth 
goes back to the country who issued the shit in the first place. You see what I'm saying? Now, first of all, we must understand as black people that there's no such thing as you making it. That's bullshit. <laughs> first of all, this is the game. They had, if you ever work in an apartment store, a big apartment store, one that has money, they have what is called shrinkage figures, or they have money set aside to sell every year. So every time you steal some shit, they make money. You know what I'm saying? They got money set aside for theft. So in actuality, it's lucrative for you to go in there and steal some stuff because the insurance companies, you see, pay off. The American government understood that they said that masses of black people will be poor. But we got enough jobs in America set aside for the people under the Freedmen's Bureau Act of, of, of Reconstruction of what you call the so-called upward mobile. So any black person saying, you know, I made it on my own, you didn't understand. You just took advantage of an opportunity that the simple fact that they had to sit set aside for a certain group of black people to make it automatic. You understand where I'm coming from? Oh, uh, damn, I, I, I should have got me some, um, uh, some, some uh, honey. I don't know if I might get horse or what. But anyway, they got money set aside. Or they had a certain amount of jobs and opportunities set aside. That is to make you think that America works for your ass. And to shift and separate a two class society that you say, them motherfuckers out there ain't shit, they lazy or whatever the type deal is, because I made it. And you didn't understand that it's not set up for everybody to make it. You got to understand how the game is played. They had already set this whole thing up for the upward mobile of what we call the black bourgeoisie or the black educated since 1865. The only thing you're doing is trying to think, think you're capitalizing on the world, but you're actually capitalizing on something that was allotted for your ass in the first place, which in actuality, it keeps everybody in slavery. You understand what I'm saying? And as I said before, what the, eight, with, with the 1965 act was, and for the people that ever, didn't ever hear this, that in actuality, the only reason why you're in the corporate world now is because from slavery up until 1965, they had stolen 98% of the technology in America came from black people and was theft. They actually stole things. The car and the phone, I mean, there's thousands of things. As a matter of fact, if you go to Wayne State University in Detroit, they got drawers of this document on shit that was stolen from people, black people, and damn near everything in this country, the rudiment, you know what the rudiment is? Yeah. They might improve it, because everything about the elite wants to come on the market, but the blueprint of the original rudiment to, to, for the computer or any damn thing was invented by black people. Foundation. The foundation. So they were going into a technological age in the 60s. They said, hey, look, we cannot steal from these people haphazardly anymore. We have to steal from them on a greater level. So therefore, we must have a small group of them to enter into the corporate world, and we can steal from them legally. We just call them motherfucker jobs and you just put the shit on their desk on Monday morning. <laughs> Give up the shit for 1916 at that particular time, $12,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Now, 20, 30, 40, but you give up all the secrets for free of charge and they make billions off right. So they had to find another advanced way to steal projects from you. Because they know that you have the archetypal blueprint for all technology in the melody. Right, right. Now the key is, I was in, doing a conference in Philly week before last. This sister said they met a brother, and up under the Lincoln, up under the Lincoln Center in Philadelphia, they have these machines, these space-age-looking machines, and probably the people that build them, when the machines break down, they don't. The people that build them, they might have to fly in from Germany somewhere. So they can't do it. So what they'll do is they'll go outside and just find a damn black man on the street. Or a black mechanic minded man. And these people can come in, look at it, don't know what the shit it is, and fix the shit. <laughs> so they said, the brother said, they, they called me up. I would come.
come down. He said these strange machines look like something in another era, 2,000 years from now. He said, I don't know, I just will look at it and just will fix it. <laughs> That's how you got first black mechanics and shit. He said, it's just like, you like you nigga, you say he, he can play by ear. Yeah. The same shit, you got some people that mechanically minded, they can just look at some shit and fix it. That's the melanin. So they can go and get a nigga off the street with a bull can in his hand, sew that motherfucker up and bring him up in there, and he look at it and say, I can fix that. Go get the movie Doc Hollywood. And look at the black man, he was a mechanic. He just look at the car and say, I can fix that. So this guy used to fix these machines, so one day he said, I'm not going to fix them no more. They said, okay, cool. You will never work again. You can't work no place else. So now they just give this cat a check. Make sure he don't go no place out of the, out of the state. And they'll give him a check and pay him, but he can't work no place else ever. So we're talking about an advancement of stealing your ideas and you thinking, hey, I have made it. I have made it. You see how this is going? So you really, in actuality, is in a, in a part of the mix and it's just like a chess game going on on your ass. Go see the movie The Game. Michael Douglas. That's real science going on there. When he qualifies for the game, everything around him was a part of the damn game. And that's how they run shit on us right now. And you thinking you making it. No, it's just that you're taking advantage of a little bit of shit that was allotted and set aside for your ass. In 1865, based on the Freedmen's Bureau, that we got to make a two-class system that have and the have-nots. And we can fool them all by making the thing, make the haves think in actuality that they made the shit on their own. Right. Yeah, right. There it keeps you understand this. Down in Atlanta, they just built this new Magic Johnson Theater. Down in Atlanta, in, in Greenbrier Mall. Black Theater. Real spiritual brother went to see the movie. Well, he got some, he don't even go to movies, but he got some free passes and went up in there. And his spirit told him to get out, get out. <laughs> they get out. He said he went in, he went in the lobby and they got all you know, kind of pictures of niggas he don't like. Bojangles, Sydney Poitier, all these kind of stuff. So. <laughs> but this particular brother can hear conversations going on thousands of years ago, hundreds of years ago, and right across town. And he heard a conversation going on with two white people. Why didn't Magic come and build one of them shits in our neighborhood? And the other guy said, oh, we don't want none of them that gas chamber in our neighborhood. And he said, watch the people. The people go into the movie and the people was coming out like zombies. You see? So we're talking about a government experimentation that's going on right through the damn movies. You see? And you should see it. This thing is the state of the art. They ain't got nothing. See, the reason why the practice is mad because they ain't got a theater like it nowhere in Atlanta. But it should have been the black community. The, uh, the, uh, what they call it, uh, stadium seating and all types of THX and Sony sound and all that shit. When we get into this today, we'll, we'll explain what all that's about. And basically, they zapping people. You see, and he said people are coming out like zombies. You see. So whatever's going on, they got the technology and that's an experimentation going on. You must understand this at this particular time because they don't even let black sports figures or movie stars or any of them come into the community as a policy. That they can't, not, not, they can't even come into the community and help the master of the people. And you say, why are these sports figures? No, it's a government policy that they can't help. They can't loan money. They don't let you know that shit because they can get killed just by talking about it. But ain't none of them niggas about shit. That's why you should never look to any person in the entertainment industry as anything of virtue they can help black people. Fuck the dumb shit. <laughs> be real about it. Word. You see. So, so they're part of the game. Part of the game. Part of the game. As a matter of fact, if they do a certain amount of things to help black people, even the political realm, you see them going down and playing like Mickey Leland, Ron Brown. See what I'm saying? Niggas going plain fall right out of the damn sky. Uh, you see what I'm saying? That's what the deal is. You got to understand that. So, what's happening at this particular time is 
They announced it twice on HBO. They announced it. Well, Chris Rock announced it on his HBO special, Bring the Pain. And they gave him two Emmy Awards for going into this, although he was very funny. But you didn't understand. He did a whole 30 minutes on talking shit about niggas. And HBO gave, in, 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 in the Cable Award, what an Emmy, Emmy Award, gave him two Emmy Awards on this thing. But he said one thing and they repeated it again. He said there's a war going on in America between niggas and black people. Shit, I didn't know the damn difference. Because right. every educated motherfucker I know is a goddamn nigga too. Right. <laughs> if you really want to break it all down, you think it's a difference between you and the nigga in the project? Because you don't learn how to spend more money? Right. You can buy a better damn suit. Right. But you're still consuming this shit. Right. Same shit. You're just buying cars, automobiles. You understand what I'm saying? Can't open up a candy stuff. <laughs> but the key is... <laughs>
And they seen people with guns and the whole big and small and the whole two box shit. It's all manufactured by the government because they're trying to tell people internationally, we got a goddamn problem. These people have run them up. And because the international world don't see nothing but that, they say they can justify taking niggas' asses out. That's a part of the genocide shit. Now let's deal with this shit. How many people disagree with me? Let's deal with it. Let's look at history because see, black people don't have but a three year attention span. Then we delete our files. That's because of a post-modern society. Let me explain this to you. Y'all all right? Because this is very important. Remember now in the 1980s, regular soul music couldn't even get on MTV. Remember they was fighting? MTV said, we only do the rock and roll cultural thing. But all of a sudden, MB, M MTV became the number one people in rap. Then you got Time Warner that, uh, that, that owns BET. And that's all you see now. But this shit is international. You understand where I'm coming from? It's international. And what they're doing now is they're showing this particular person, and that's all they see over there. Uh -huh. That's it. And then a few movies waiting to exhale, which wasn't a damn positive black man in the shit, wasn't a positive woman in the shit. No Never a positive ass woman. Motherfucker sound pregnant and you get the fuck out. <laughs> you know, all of them fucking each other husbands and all kind of crazy shit going on. <laughs> you, oh Lord, you think it's all a part of the stuff. You got to understand how they are lining this thing up where they don't see nothing but black people in a negative like international wise. You see what I'm saying? And that's all they think of. They think, so they think that the whole culture, from 80 years old to one, is the Wu-Tang Clan. Now that's insane. Okay, us, that's cool. We understand that that's the whole inner city thing and the whole, and, and the whole thing, because it's not, it's not just New York City, hell, that's fucking Miami, Florida, and down Atlanta. South Carolina. We understand that, but you got to understand the government infiltration on how they're dealing with this shit. And the whole thing is to say, hey, these people here, they're actually thugs, and we got to actually. Yeah, all right. We got to get rid of them. Anything went down, nobody would care. Nobody would care, and they could, So if they just came in, and all of a sudden, you see the movie, like Logan's Ruin, that Richard Pryor talked about, wasn't no damn black people in that shit. They were already, in the national community, they would have already taught the people and, and, and conditioned the people to say, well, they had to wipe the motherfuckers out. They were killing people, so what they're doing is they're coming to kill a few tourists. Kill a man from Germany, yeah. from Sweden. Every now and then, some, some cracker get took out in Harlem, in Miami. They say, it ain't safe. And this is how they set the stage, and you gotta understand what's going on. But they're doing it now, so what they have done, they have found a way to come in, and they're using the youth and their music to do it. Now, this is the new shit that's going down. They had the East Coast, West Coast thing. So now they're getting ready to do this North and South thing, because you got a lot of Southern people coming up with this thing done. Uh, what's the name of them? Outcast, um, Goody Mob, and Master P and all. So now you've got this fight where you got people, I, I noticed it, because in, in the AU Center, but you got freshmen, instead of the hip-hop culture, as far as, because the people pumping this hip-hop culture shit on You see, hip-hop culture, so KRS-One, who was a brother who was singing about Egypt and Africa and all this kind of stuff, now he's talking about a hip-hop university. Shit done changed up a little bit. And you don't understand how they, they, they feed this thing in on you because it's government control. The government ain't letting you evolve into shit now unless he's manipulating it. Right, right, right. You gotta understand what's going on here. So now they are actually, people in the freshman in college is actually, actually living the image of a Tupac other than living the image of an African scientist that Tupac and the rest of the people used to rap on. You get the science on what I'm talking about here? They have changed this thing right now, changed it around. You see, they have changed this thing around to the point where as they can justify the actual genocide on what's actually going on here. You see. And so now this southern thing, I was up in the um, AU Center and I said, well, there's some guy was giving out booty mob tapes and brothers from New York saying, well, I don't listen to country music. No, wait a minute. <laughs> like Malcolm X said, any place south of the Canadian border is damn south. Still Dixie. 
You understand where I'm coming from? But we understand that it ain't got shit to do with the youth. It's got something to do with the government infiltration. And we'll show you how that actually go on, because a lot of this thing is just straight up robots. We'll deal with that also. So now, still deal with the hard copy. As we said the last couple of times I was here is the government has been to the apology thing. So they are apologizing. So now they just had an apology about a month ago, 120 years ago, first black cadet from West Point was kicked out. You know, they, they framed the brother and messed him up on some tests and stuff and kicked him out. Brother ended up going to South Carolina State College and he died at age 22, I think. But, uh, 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 but the brother was like the top of his class at South Carolina State College. So they came and gave him his degree about a month ago, West Point. Very key, because they're still doing this apology shit. Very key that you understand this particular time. We'll understand what's going on in this particular part with this apology. I'll go into a few more points in a few minutes when we're dealing with that at this particular time. So now you got this whole blood thing up here. Crips and Bloods in LA now, Crips and Bloods out here cutting people on the subways for initiation. Right? First of all, that whole thing is a government clone set up. Those are robots. You see what I'm saying? When we go into clone wars in a few minutes, so that whole thing is they can do what the hell they want to now because they've had cloning since 1945. So a lot of things that you think that is, is actually going, you say stuff is getting out of hand, is manufactured. So now they've got this whole thing going on in the Crimson Bloods up here. That's the clone operation is going down. You've got to understand that. So at this particular time, what we're talking about is we're talking about a war so bad until at this particular time, people who are not into consciousness, in some form or another, you gotta be very careful of. And I'm not saying this is for you to discriminate when I talk about getting the big head. What we're saying is at this particular time, if a person does not take shit seriously, just happy to be here, skinny in the grin. <laughs> and every damn time you try to talk some serious shit to people, they reject it. You gotta look close at them, because that's one of the key points of the clone thing. Very key. Now when we get into this, I, I'm going to explain some shit. We're gonna go into the history of it. But we want to deal with some other things right now. Uh, go, there's a new Mortal Kombat movie coming out. How many people saw the first Mortal Kombat movie? Uh, very key that you see that because the first one they went to the underground, they got a new un the underworld, which is Atlantis. We'll get, deal with the science on that in a few minutes. But there's a new Mortal Kombat movie coming out. Very key that you understand that at this particular time. We need to check that particular movie out, uh, which we're giving some other stuff in a few minutes. Also, this is the 10 year anniversary of the death of Peter Tosh. You know, he died in 19, when well, he was murdered in 1987. You know what I'm saying? Very key. Because if you understand something about cycles, and I need some paper napkin or something, wipe off it. Uh, you can, I think there's some napkins in the bathroom. Go in the bathroom and roll down and give me some napkins. You know, the, uh, the brown ones. You got them in the men's bathroom. But anyway, if you understand something about a 10-year cycle, everything goes in cycles. The same time that he got murdered, certain things happened. You had the, the stock market crash, 1987. He got murdered in 1987. 1987, you also had Oh, yeah, you can bring that too. 1987, you also had the brother that bought the actress. What's his name on? Reginald Lewis. Lewis that they took out. Killed the brother. Brain cancer. Took the brother out. You see. Because any brother that's trying to do some things on a level that it can affect other people, they take them out. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, you can have all the goddamn legislation jobs and all the government jobs and, you know, and all the old bullshit. As soon as you start getting to the point where you can make a difference, they automatically take you out. That's the government policy. You see what I'm saying? So, they took the brother out after a while. They let him live a little while and then they took the brother out because they, they found out the brother was a real deal player. And he knew what he could do and he did it well. You see what I'm saying? So they, so they, so they took the brother out also too. Very key that you understand a 10 year cycle. Now, if you study mythology, mythology is physics. If, how many people have, uh, have heard me talk about the Crawley thing? Or mm -hmm. uh, the Eon of Bayard and the Eon of Heru? 
The eon of Maya, eon of Heru, Heru is the Egyptian Christ, which, which we got a problem here, because the oldest statue in the world is the Sphinx. And that is the Egyptian Heru, which is the original Christ, who is yet to come, but is now on the planet now. So for the mere fact that you got somebody coming, saying they Christ, in the form of this particular person, a couple thousand years ago, and fulfilled the so-called prophecy, it don't mean it is the true Christ, Christos, anointed one. Yeah, I, I'll use all of this, believe it or not. <laughs> the eon of Hebrew came in 1904, based on the teachers of Alistair Crowley that you can also get in the book, Confessions of Alistair Crowley, as well as the book, The Equinox of the Gods. This is the real serious shit here. But we know in the Egyptian mythology, there is also a feminine aspect of the Christ, which is what? Mara, Ma, which means mother act. You get the word Atan, which means son. It means mother son. Maha, or the word act, the original Atan. The original Atan used to just be act. So, and this uh, uh, you get the word ha, ma, you say that ma again, ku. Ha, which means a uh, her, which means her, which means light, a uh, son, f u n, and f o n, which is the masculine aspect, which just means manifested. Ma, which is the daughter, which means unmanifested, which is the primal energy behind the particular son. Then you get them both united, and it means ku. Ku is an ancient word for pyramid, which means polarity, and it means both male and female energy united to bring about the Christ, Christos, anointed one, which used to be a title before Paul and the Romans made the motherfucker into one person, which used to be what you supposed to get to the Christos level, which Jesus said, is it not written in your Lord? If ye are God, then the scriptures cannot be broken, which we have the scriptures up here for the people that want them also too. But the key is, this came in 1904. The masculine energy and the other energy came in 1948. Now, we understand that things that happen on the physical realm might have another meaning but there's always some stuff that's happening on the spiritual realm. Now to understand this, you need to go get two movies, Clash of the Titans and Jason and the Argonauts, where you will see Zeus and Hera and the gods standing over looking down on earth and they got chess things going and they're placing things in situations to come out a certain way. That's real deal shit. It just so happens it happened to be your higher self that put you in positions to even be here or to even get a certain amount of knowledge when other people are walking around dead. You get it? So now, there is something also going on in these two marches. Although the physical realm, it didn't make sense, you know, people just marching. Big deal. Ain't nothing will ever come out of that no more. You might feel good, but it was interesting. When the brothers marched, they came back and they was like on fire. And they couldn't understand the people. They said, well, what, did, what happened? They said, I don't know. But it was just hell. That's because the higher self. Same thing with the sisters. Well, what's the agenda? Hell, they said the sisters to put this shit together was like, fuck it, this is how we march. <laughs> but the energy was like, I don't know. Now, what does that mean? That means, now, for the sisters that want to come in, you know the, the African rule. If we got some sisters standing up, the brothers going to ask the chairs. If you got, well, we got some other chairs. So, when the chairs run out, if some other sisters come, the brothers going to ask the chairs, let the sisters sit on down. <laughs> That's the southern term, or the ass. <laughs> now, but going back to the march, on the physical realm, we're still trying to figure out what the hell the marches was about. Because you still ain't got a true agenda on either one. But on the spiritual realm, you have the E.R. Hair who came in 1904, which is talking about 
energy. Then you have Jeremiah came in 1948. So you had the masculine energy came in 1995 and the feminine energy coming in 1997. The key is this. When the masculine energy comes, it's only the bridegroom that can't do shit until the feminine energy comes. Because that's the last word. You know in Egyptian mythology, Maya is the last element. So for the mere fact, for the mere fact, all the stuff we've been dealing with for the last five years, we had to wait on the feminine element to come, because that's the last energy in the final say so. This is some real new shit going on here. You gotta put it together. Right, perfect triangle. You got four elements. You got the fifth element, which is the physical body. You put them all together. It read the four and the five is talking about energies. And it's also talking about both the male and female duality. You want to understand more about this, you need to get, you need to read the Kabbalah, which is the esoteric Hebrew. The esoteric Hebrew is, and you need to go see the movie, the movie, uh, what's the movie, um, uh, A Stranger Among Us, Melanie Griffin. So you thought them little people with them little black hats over there and shit was walking around. You didn't step to them motherfuckers, you know, they eat kosher meat and they dress in black and they stay in the summertime with some hot and shit. You didn't know that they was actually studying the esoteric Islam on your ass and they imitating you while you trying to imitate them. But if you go see the movie, the movie, um, Stranger Among Us, did the Hebrew boy kept telling them, no, the feminine person is the most spiritual. The woman is the most spiritual. That's right. So you're talking about esoteric Islam, um, 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 Sufism, um, excuse me, Judaism. Now esoteric Judaism, which is the biblical aspect, the Judeo-Christian aspect from Torah, Bible, and Quran, the woman ain't nothing but a second-rate citizen, a slave, and a motherfucking hoe, and some servant to the male. That's the veil. But in the esoteric Kabbalah, the whole doctrine has to wait on something called the Shekinah. And the Shekinah is the feminine element, which is the key. Now what does that mean? Let me explain this to you. You all get this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To break it down in language terms, you got a male energy and a female energy. Let me explain this to you. This is the Kabbalah. You understand? You've seen the tree of life before. Right. <laughs> You've seen the tree of life. Which is the Kabbalah. Which comes from Egypt out of the temple of Komoombo. Which we're talking about, the Hebrew thing is nothing but the Ethiopian version of the same Egyptian family. The Canaanites, the Cushites. Before the white boy died into it and shit and start fronting. Mm -hmm. He had nothing to do with the real Hebrew whatsoever. He was converted into Hebrewism into Spain. Mm -hmm. Get the book out of the cult of 13 tribes. Which is the definitive text on that. But, this is the top realm, which is the pyramid. This is the bottom realm. The top realm is the heaven realm. But the bottom realm can't shit happen until this field, which is called Ma'aku, Ma'aku, or Shekinah, which is the Mother Earth, is the key to the whole Kabbalah. Now let me explain this to you on what this means. Here's the book Gershwin Shrewd and Kabbalah, which is one of the uh, which, which is one of the scholars on. You can get this is a hardback version. You can get the other for fourteen dollars. It's in paperback now. Which is one of the top scholars in Hebrew mysticism. He died in 1982. So when he died, the white Jews say, "Fuck it, we don't know what we're gonna do." You see, just like they had with that other uh, 
Lababa went to Judah died in 1987, 1994, they said was the Messiah. Yes. Yes. But anyway, I want to read something to you to understand the concept of God in the esoteric function. This is very key that you get this. So I can explain this to you right now. It says, at opposite poles, both man and God encompasses within their being the entire cosmos. God has the universe and the cosmos in him. You have the universe and the cosmos in you called melanin, which is the archetypal blueprint, which is the acoustic record, which is the book that's supposed to be opened in the book of Revelation that you're supposed to read from. You get this? So you have the entire cosmos in you if you are the original man and woman, just as God has the entire cosmos in him. Now this is what you've got to understand right now. Because at this time, you're supposed to stop praying. That ain't doing you no good. Praying. Now, I'm going to break this thing down to you so you can understand. This is what the priests understand. Now, it says that both man and God has, the both, it has, it, 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 both man and God has within themselves the entire cosmos. However, whereas God contains by all virtue of being, its creator and the initiator on whom everything is rooted in all potency is hidden. So it says God contains the complete potency and the creative force that is in this particular realm called God is hidden. The next thing it says, man's role is to complete the process by being an agent through whom all powers of creation is truly activated and made manifest. Now let me explain this, what this thing is saying in layman's terms. When you say God, God is a, such a vast concept, it's called nothingness. And from the nothing you get the absolute. You got a big old conductor of electricity. And all your electricity is powerful. It ain't shit until it comes through that goddamn wall. And that ain't nothing to hit that TV set or that iron or that blender. So the perfecting agent of the electricity is the damn TV set. You get it? God is a mass thing of nothingness. A feminine principle at that. Of nothingness. But it can't do shit. It is put out a law that it can only operate through you. That's it. So that means, by that being nothing in a big ball of, uh, 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 of potential, the only thing that exists is you, which is the conductor of that force, which needs to be part. You get that? Do you understand what that means? That means that you can't be praying no more to nothing. Because it don't exist. It only, it does exist, but it's a force. Go back and get the Star Wars trilogy, a force that covers everything. But it has no potential. It has potential, but it has no spark. Because the conductor that it created to be utilized is your ass. You get it? So when they say there is no God but man, that's true in two-fold phases. There is God, but that's so vast until it's not even worth even talking about because it's beyond comprehension of energy. It's just a bunch of energy or thought or whatever you want, miraculous. But the energy can only be utilized through its conductor or what they call its acting agent. You get it? So, the bottom sphere of Earth is the ultimate frontier because at this particular time, the only energy can only be utilized and come through Earth. Which, the feminine principle down here is the last part to get this thing. Not a whole damn machine can work because the whole Mars was dealing with on a higher level. Once the sister gets going, the whole train can start the rocking and the rolling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want, to, I, want to, I want to complete this. It says, 
The man, man's role is to complete the process by being an agent through whom all powers of creation is fully achieved and made manifest. What exists seemingly in God unfolds and develops in man. You get it? What exists in God unfolds and develops in man. The key formula formulations and the out outlook is already formed in the Kabbalah. Now the cracker starts, he wants to tell you something, he wants to tell his people something, but this is when he can elevate.